This video is sponsored by Sell Your Mac. Blackmagic Design, the creators of the popular DaVinci Resolve video editing software suite, has launched a DaVinci Resolve for iPad. And before you guys uh, scoff at it and thinking it's gonna be just like a dumbed down version of an editor for an iPad, it is not. It is almost 100% the full on desktop suite for editing that you can possibly imagine, but scale down for the iPad. And I'm not a DaVinci Resolve user, so that's the first thing I wanna preface. And so where I am very frustrated in this whole process was just me not knowing the software. Um, I've been editing on Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere uh, a little bit on and off there for the, like the last 10 plus years. And so doing you know a full on switch and trying to learn DaVinci Resolve in a day is something that's just not feasible, but I tried my best and edited actually a YouTube short, which you can check out the YouTube short right now if you want to, it is fully out. It's on the Logitech Slim Folio uh, keyboard and uh, crayon for the 10th generation iPad. And I edited this um, entire thing here on DaVinci Resolve. It's only a minute long, but it did give me, you know, it took me a while to do too, because I, I wanted to learn the ins and outs of the software as best I could and figure out um, how it matches up with my workflow. And I just kind of wanted to go over that real quick. I'll try to keep things as brief as possible and also give you some more information about what you can expect uh, for DaVinci Resolve for iPad when that officially comes out. Now, again, this is in beta. I was lucky enough to be able to test the beta. Um, Blackmagic actually gave me the full version of it. There's gonna be a free version when this comes out, and so you'll get DaVinci Resolve for free, or you can get DaVinci Resolve Studio for the iPad for $95. And so I wanted to <clears throat> test out the full fledged suite here, and I also tested it out on my MacBook just to kind of see and compare and contrast uh, briefly how close these apps are. And again, they are very, very close. I'll highlight some of the differences though first so that you know. Um, obviously there are some UI differences and that's mostly just because they are two different devices. So obviously on a Mac you have up here uh, a menu bar and so you'll have like file, edit, window and then things um, that are you know dedicated to the app specifically, maybe like a clip section and you can find some of the settings and functionality for the app that is um, available and that's not as easy to do on an iPad. And so obviously there are no menu bar findings across here. And so it is a little bit harder to find some of the things that you need to get. And so um, at the top you have your media, you have your sync and your transitions and titles and effects and things um, that you can add into everything. Down here is the home button. And so this is where, uh, and by the way, one of the cool things that really has me intrigued and something that I, I really want to uh, explore more because it might get me to switch from Final Cut uh, to DaVinci Resolve is that not only can you edit off of a network shared library, but also they launched a little bit ago Blackmagic Cloud Beta. And so you could, in theory, as long as you have the original media, and as you can see here, I have a um, adapter plugged into the USB-C port for my SD card reader. <clears throat> but if I had all of the media uh, for a project that I was working on, let's just say I'm working on it here at the studio and I wanna go home and finish on my iPad on the couch, um, I can do that and I don't need to have the library, I just need the media. So as long as I carry the drive with me or if I have access to a NAS system, I can pull that those files off and then get all of the cloud library and everything saved and sign in and edit off of my iPad and it won't mess up anything off of your desktop or MacBook version of DaVinci Resolve. It'll just kind of be um, the same and it'll sync across and things that aren't available on your Mac will still be available to view here. You just won't be able to change things. Um, for the most part though, everything else is 100% the same. And so, yes, you don't have the menu bar items, but they are in this app. Most of those uh, features and settings that you need to find, you just have to look, uh, you might have to go into settings here and you can you know, go through your master, your image scaling, your color management. You can change everything. Obviously for master settings, this is where I needed to go in and change the resolution. Most importantly, I needed to change from a regular aspect ratio to a vertical aspect ratio. Um, and you can do that if you're setting up a new project. This one's already set up. One of the major things that you'll notice is down here at the bottom, you only have a cut tab and the color tab. Uh, on desktop, you actually have the edit tab, fusion, media, fair light, and deliver. And I think for me, my biggest frustration, and I think there's a lot of people out there, and correct me if I'm wrong, please leave me a comment down below if you're a huge DaVinci Resolve user. 
I think there's a love hate with the cut tab. And I am definitely more towards the hate. I'm not a big fan. I've noticed on the edit tab on desktop that it is far more in line with what I am traditionally used to, a traditional timeline. Uh, being able to scrub and everything feels much more in line with Final Cut Pro. And the cut tab does not. And that carries over here. It's a little bit different. but. I was able to get through the video no problem. And then, you know, on top of that, you have a full fledged suite of color tools and things that you can do with this. You can add masks, you can add everything that you could possibly imagine for the most part on the studio version you can do here. And um, now I guess it's really just time to talk about performance. And I do want to say I have noticed absolutely zero performance drops. Um, in everyday editing. Now, if I added a bunch of this 4K, uh, these 4K clips to the timeline and, you know, mess with different settings like maybe opacity and things like that, where it really has to be in real time um, using that processing power in order to play the clips without, yes, a couple of frames might drop here and there, but just doing a basic edit like this, and I had different streams of video going at the same time while I was editing, and then I kind of condensed it to make it look nicer uh, and clean things up a bit, but it performs super well. It um, was able to export pretty fast. Again, this is only like a minute long clip, maybe a little less than that. And it was rendering out in about half of that time. I would say about 20 to 30 seconds for a 50-ish second to a minute long clip. It rendered out pretty fast and I was very impressed with everything. Again, I noticed no lags, no dropped flame frames, no freezing, no nothing. And scrubbing through the timeline and, and doing all that, you can hear uh, the audio in the background of the video is great. And then you have different tools that you can add in, like the Apple Pencil. So, I mean, I can take the Apple Pencil, I can scrub through, I can adjust clips and edit things differently here. Um, and it just really gives you a different element that you don't get on a MacBook or on your desktop, like a Mac Studio, like I have here. I can't use my Apple Pencil. I can get some other third-party style. It just doesn't work the same. And so, yeah, I mean, you can really, and even with the M2 iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, Apple Pencil hover feature works really well here because I can kind of scrub through, you can see here, um, to kind of scrub through this clip and decide what I want to do. If I want to double tap and then go in and set in and out points, I can do that and I can use the hover feature for certain things to kind of see where I'm at and really fine tune everything. And so there are definite performance benefits and editing benefits and efficiency benefits with the Apple Pencil and being able to do this. But I will say with that said, I am primarily a keyboard and mouse guy. And again, a lot of my frustrations that lie with using the keyboard and mouse, mostly just scrubbing is different on this cut page. Again, when you go to the edit page, it feels so much easier. You know, the horizontal scrubbing with the trackpad feels much more like the Final Cut Pro, but doing it here and you have to really kind of click up here to scrub through. And if I click down here, I'm at risk of pulling things. And I just didn't really like the way that works. Um, so that is just something that has to do with the software and me not knowing it, more so performance and efficiency and everything else. For a beta, this is really good. It's I think it's ready to go. I don't know what else they need to fix. There might have been a few things here and there, but I really can't remember anything that like caused me a lot of anxiety or annoyance or whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, and then keyboard commands, you know, some of them translate well and work with Final Cut Pro as the same way they work on DaVinci Resolve, and some of them just don't. I have to learn where everything is at. I had no idea how to create a multi-camera clip. I wanted to do kind of an ambitious video, and I had no idea how it worked. And I looked it up and was able to kind of figure it out, and it does translate the same as Studio a little bit, but it's still something that I need to kind of work on and get more familiar with it. And again, that's a me thing, not a iPad DaVinci Resolve thing. And so yeah, I really can't state performance enough. I was very impressed. And I did say that I've added a bunch of effects and things like that. Um, you know, just to show you live, like how many, you know, if I add a magic mask here, um, let's just say I circle that and I <clears throat> want it to start doing, you know, the tracking there. Um, it, it's got a lot of frames and it, it does end, render out really, really fast. It, it seems to be performing um, no different really than the M1 MacBook Pro Max that I have. And so, yeah, 
I'm very impressed with everything going on. The fact that I can full on color grade uh, professionally via my iPad, sitting in the comfort of my own home, on the couch maybe, um, you know, with an Apple Pencil helping me fine tune the D, it's, it's kind of a dream come true. I'm still holding out hope for a Final Cut Pro version, but I might honestly make the switch. There are so many benefits to being able to have this on my iPad. Um, this also just, again, it makes it feel like a pro device and also, something that maybe I can replace my, my MacBook with. I think we might be at that point now where if this could become my main editor of choice, I, I really can see myself um, replacing my MacBook for traveling and using this and editing off of this and having no issues whatsoever. So for those of you who are wondering who can use this version of DaVinci Resolve for iPad, well, it's not gonna be everyone right away, um, but this version is optimized for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the M2 chip and all other iPads with the M1 and M2 chip are also supported. And DaVinci Resolve um, is going to be, well, Blackmagic does state that other iPads with iPadOS 16 support will work with limited functionality. And so I don't know if you're gonna get everything that you get here, because again, I think performance and power is gonna be a key factor in being able to run everything. But um, if you have an M1 and M2 iPad Pro, then you are good to go. But specifically, these are optimized for the biggest and baddest iPad that you can get, which is currently the M2 uh, iPad Pro with the 12.9 inch display. And so yeah, overall, I cannot state enough how impressed I've been with it. Uh, editing video off of this has been fantastic. And I would love to hear from you. Do you finally feel like we're heading in the right direction where an iPad Pro can actually be a Pro device and help professionals like myself or you or whoever's watching this get to where they need to be with their work and using an iPad? Let me know in the comments down below. And before we do end this video, I wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, CellularMac.com. CellularMac.com is now an OWC company, and CellularMac.com is the number one most trusted Apple trade and website out there. The website helps Apple users get cash back on their used devices to help fund new Apple device purchases. So whether you are upgrading to the iPhone 14 lineup, or you have a Mac sitting in your closet from your last upgrade, you can get an instant price using the trade-in tool. For a limited time, you can get a $15 bonus on every item over $100 if you head on over to sellyourmac.com right now, which is the safest and easiest place to trade in your used Apple devices. So click the link in the description down below for more details. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.